Hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana here and Pete Fakaisen coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast live. We're live, baby. And uh, we're going to be talking about something today that I believe every mortgage professional needs to master and build muscle in if you want to dominate the purchase market in your space. And that is Realtor Recon. How to avoid wasting your valuable time, energy, and money on the wrong realtors. So I've got the big cheese, the big kahuna, the master sensei himself when it comes to Realtor Recon and attracting Realtor partners, Pete Fakaisen on with me. We're going to be doing an interview with Pete Vance here back and forth on really the critical components of why do recon, how to do recon, how to set yourself to, to set yourself up to win when it comes to attracting the right partners and really maximizing your return on investment when it comes to attracting the right partners who don't just say they're going to send you business, but step up and commit and send you all their business, make you their exclusive. So for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, Pete Fakaisen, um, for those of you who are kind of uninitiated, so to speak, on the background, let me give you a quick background on Pete. Uh, he's been in the game 15 years, so certainly not his first rodeo. He's done over a billion dollars. Yes, that's with a B, over a billion dollars in funded loans. So this guy is definitely an expert in the space when it comes to not just doing the loans, but more importantly, attracting them, attracting the partners, attracting the lead streams, attracting the business. And uh, he's been in the $100 million realm for quite some time, $120 million originated uh, is really his uh, area of production. And that's with doing a whole lot of stuff. That's with being a manager, not just producing himself. So this guy is the real deal when it comes to production. He walks the talk, he lives it, he breathes it, he eats it for freaking breakfast every day. This guy's not talking theory. He's talking about what he actually does to kick ass at a very high level, top 1% in the industry. Uh, he's got a keen understanding of real estate. He was uh, 10 years as a in-house lender for a real estate company. So he knows the game when it comes to navigating through the realtor relationships and how to maximize return on investment with those overtures. And he also knows how to use social media and lead generation and self-sourcing your own leads through uh, social media like Facebook to be able to become irreplaceable and indispensable with realtors and really own that relationship and have leverage in the relationship where he calls the shots. He says, jump, they say, how high? And uh, he's worked with me for the last about year and a half. So I've had the privilege and opportunity to coach him to that next level of success in leadership and marketing and mindset. And now uh, we've decided to partner together in sharing more tips, strategies, secrets to help you win on these Facebook lives. So he'll be, you'll be seeing more of uh, Pete and you'll be happy to know that you're going to be seeing more of Pete over the coming weeks and months as we partner together, he's going to be a contributor, panelist, and faculty member at MortgageMarketingCoach.com because he wants to turn back now and really give back to the industry and uh, and help his fellow loan officers win. A rising tide raises all the boats. So he's got a big heart and a big uh, white hot burning desire to help his fellow loan officers kick ass, take names, chew bubble gum, and win in this business. So without further ado, Pete, thanks for hanging with me today, brother. Thanks, Doran. Happy uh, Friday before 4th of July week, everybody. Yes. And, uh, excited to be here and excited that summer's here. And hopefully uh, a bunch of us will be taking some time off for the next week or so after a Absolutely. So Absolutely. You know, it's our peak season. So uh, in, in a lot of mortgage professionals' lives, this is the time to make hay. But you don't want to ever let go of the site, the um, principal behind why you have this business. And that is for it to serve you, not the other way around. You wanna build a business that gives you a great life, not just a great income. And those are two very different things. So as we enter into uh, summer season here, uh, keep that in mind to not get so caught up in the thick of it that you don't make the time, not take the time, but make the time to have your business serve you by taking time with family, connecting with friends, have some fun in the sun, all that good stuff. So with that in mind, as we talk about setting up the business to serve you, not the other way around, let's talk about recon, realtor recon. Now, recon is a military term. Some of you uh, 
Obviously, those of you who are in the military would uh, find that word very familiar. But for those who are not so much military minded or not acquainted with the word, break it down for us, Pete. What do we mean by recon? What is the meaning of the word recon? So recon means to explore, investigate, examine, scrutinize, inspect, observe, take a close look, patrol, um, ex uh, examination, inspection, uh, check it out, scope it out. And, and you know, Doran, I think the timing of this is great because, you know, we just are kind of closing out one of the busiest parts of our year, right? Mm -hmm. And this is a really good time. I know we like to talk about taking time off, but during that time off, if you have time to do that reflection and think about how your partnerships went during the busiest times, I know that I have, and I've spent a lot of my week not only getting ready to close this, this out, but really trying to figure out, okay, how do I go and approach my partners for Q3, Q4? Because Q3, Q4, everybody, as you know, if you've been in this business a while, it can be deadly. You mm -hmm. got to make sure the moolah is coming in the door. So you have to align your partnerships. You've got to make those appointments now. That's so people, you know, people really start disappearing come August for those, you know, one, two week, you know, uh, vacations. And then, bam, you got school starting September here in the States, probably late August in in Canada, right? Is that where when school starts, late August for you guys? No, September. Uh, usually it's like uh, the first first week of September. Yes, yeah, so that's the same thing with us here in the States. So, you know, you really got to prepare because September, again, deadly. If you don't have a pipeline going into September, you mm -hmm. could be sucking wind for a, a couple months. So yeah. partners, reflection, doing recon and who you want to work with, you know, and really trying to develop those tools now, thinking about the conversations that you can bring your partnership now. So I, I think the recon part is one definition that we just went through, but I mean, Doran, what, break down to me what your definition of a partner is. Cause I think, you know, you, that you really taught me a lot about what I should make, see in a partner. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, you even hear the word partner and it's a very different feel than just saying a realtor, you know, I've got a realtor versus I've got a partner, right? Notice the difference in the feeling of those two words. One is just, you know, anyone with a pulse who can fog a mirror who calls themselves a realtor. The other one, there's a reciprocation involved. You know, there's mutual reciprocation, mutual respect, re mutual commitment. There's a common mission, a common goal. You're working together in collaboration and synergy towards a common cause you're working together to accomplish something bigger than you can ever accomplish on your own. To me, that's what a partnership is. And that comes in lots of different forms. You know, a marriage is a partnership working together to create a beautiful life together, to create a beautiful legacy together, to create a beautiful family life together, to create a beautiful love life together. Right. And then we've got business partnerships that obviously are, perhaps less intimate in most cases than a marriage, but nonetheless, there's that mutual commitment, synergy, collaboration, shared values, and a shared common cause. So that's how I would define partnership. Now the question is why bother with recon though? I mean, okay, Doran and Pete sounds interesting. I like the idea of scrutinizing, examining, to really look at who I'm wanting to target, but why bother recon? And my question to you is, if you're asking that question, my question to you is, why bother, you know, even interviewing someone before you marry them? Why not just take anyone with a pulse who could fog a mirror who is interested in you, right? Why bother taking the time to scrutinize someone? Why not just say, hey, you're interested in me? Really? Are you that crazy? I better, but I better button down a deal right now before you come to your senses, right? <laughs> so let's talk about that for Pete for a moment. Okay. Why bother with recon? Why bother being strategic about it? Well, I, I think, you know, when you're looking at doing recon, I mean, one of the things that I try to focus on is where can I find a common ground? Where can I find someone that has the same likes that I have? So, you know, I think a lot of people in general 
like to do their recon on LinkedIn, which I think is an okay tool because you can see, I think it's got a vast, uh, I think there's a lot more sharing there of business information compared to a Facebook or an Instagram or a Twitter, right? I think you can find trends with people a lot better on Facebook, especially personal ones. And, you know, what I've learned, you know, over the last 15 years and, you know, working, you know, specifically with the real estate company for 10 years was, you know, just because you're a body in somebody's office and just because you're there and you show up doesn't mean you get the business. Right. You have to do that recon. When I was in an office working with 30 real estate agents, just because I was there, I wasn't going to get the deal. Mm -hmm. And just because I was bringing lunch you know, quarterly or breakfast to a meeting or, you know, um, you know, sponsoring part of the holiday party or doing whatever, you know, that doesn't mean that you're going to get business, right? right. Mm -hmm. So it's really what I've come to find out is you really have to know someone personally because they you got to build that trust. And I think the trust, you know, for me, when I look for partners and I do that recon is what do I have in common with someone? Um, and, 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 how can I, you know, not only be their business partner, but how can I be their friend? How can they know that I care about this transaction more? I mean, I'm very passionate about what I do. I don't sleep if deals aren't like can't be done or if there's a problem. You know, that's just the way I'm built, right? Dude, it sucks to be you, man, in this kind of business, not be able yeah, to sleep. It does. Gotta... <laughs> Luckily, hey, Doran, we do a really good job up front. So we try to, we try right. to. Well, you better, if you're losing sleep over that, you well, better well, do a bad, well, dang good job at that. <laughs> well, you know what, man? I think that's a real, this is a really good thing is, you know, doing recon, ha finding a partner. You know, if I'm looking online and I see someone's friends with 30 different lenders, do I want to be one of their 30? Probably not. So that's a great question to sit down and ask them. So doing recon is really trying to format your interview questions, formatting what you need to ask them when you're going to meet with someone, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you go into it blind, I have a lot of loan officers that we coach Doran, and a lot of people ask me every time, um, well, what do I say? I got the appointment. What do I say? Well, if you've done your recon, you know what to say. Hey, mm -hmm. you got a Bernese Mountain Dog. So do I. Hey, oh, I love dogs. You're so you're a dog lover. You know, um, you know. There's lots of different things you can do, but doing that recon up front kind of lays the foundation for the questions and the things you're going to review. Because sure. the things that I like to review when I'm doing, you know, a, a intro partner meeting is, hey, you know, I know how to do mortgages, right? So I've been in the business 15 years. This is who I work for. We're accountable. I've closed a lot of loans. I don't want to talk about that. But how do we work as a partnership, right? And, you know, that recon is kind of understanding maybe who they use for their closing attorney or title company. Um, maybe asking some people you know that do business with that person. Um, maybe you know another realtor that knows that realtor um, mm -hmm. or attorney if you're looking to do, you know, finding an attorney partner. So I think, you know, again, you can check LinkedIn and tr maybe find some mutual ground with friends that you might know, but you can find out a lot on Facebook about someone and it's mm -hmm. creepy. It really right. is. And I, and I don't want to sound like a creep or creeper or, you know, peeping Tom or whatever it is, but well, you let's know, be real. if they're smart, they're going to be doing their recon on you too. It goes right. both ways, right? Well, it's crazy, man. How many people on Facebook, like, I walked up the other day and I was with two of my kids and I was at, you know, some random pl uh, restaurant and a woman I haven't seen in 15 years that I did business with way back when walks up. It's like Pete for Kaisen, Oh my gosh, how are you? And I'm like, Oh great. She's like, I feel like I know you. I watch, I see all your posts on Facebook and I'm like, Oh, that is weird. <laughs> I haven't seen you in 15 years, but you've been following me. Right, right. Like, she feels you know, like she knows you. She's up to date on your world and your life, even though you haven't had a real conversation in 15 it's years. It's like going to a high school reunion and everybody knows all your business. Oh, right. you were just, I can't believe you were just at the Super Bowl last week or this. And I'm like, oh my God, I haven't seen you in 10 years. How do you know that? Right. I, I follow you on Facebook. Um, so you can find out a lot about people by just looking at what they're doing online um, mm -hmm. in you know, social media trends. You know, um, and I think that's really good recon 
for your business and what you're going to bring to you know your real your your partner, whether it be a real estate person, uh, an accountant or CPA, a financial advisor, an attorney. You know you can find out a lot about them if you just look them up. Right. Um, and and it's not being creepy. It's just trying to identify who they are. That's so you can take the next step to be their partner. If or or disqualify them in advance. If there's something 100%. about what you see on their profile, they're like, nope, that's not going to be, that's a red flag. That's not going to be the right fit. Right. Then you can save yourself the time and hassle of even making the overture. Right. And that's the big piece. I mean, if you're dating, for example, I haven't been in the dating world for almost two decades, but uh, if you're in the dating world and you're looking for that special someone that you can build a life with, not just have a one and done, but have a create a great life with, have a true partnership with, a lifelong partnership with. You're gonna do the recon for two reasons. One is to see if this person's worth a date, right? Is this person actually someone that attracts me and interests me? And then the other piece is now you've got fodder for conversation in that initial meeting, right? Because you've done a little research. You tell me you're into hiking and you tell me you're into skiing. So am I, you know, where, where's your favorite hiking spot? Where's your favorite ski mountain, right? So you got common interests, you got things to talk about. You've got uh, some, some sizzle in your rapport that you can stimulate right away. So there's that, there's two components, real two benefits to recon. Number one, qualify them in advance to see if they're worthy of a first date, so to speak. And number two, what are you going to talk about? Where are the common interests? Where's the you know fodder for synergy and uh, and rapport? Is that basically what I'm hearing you say, Pete? Yeah, yeah. I think you know again doing yeah doing that recon up front is going to give you all the tools to have a very successful first meeting or no meeting. Right. You know? um, and and then, really, you know, like I've looked at what some people have done. I'm like, whoa, this person's super political. I want nothing to do with that stuff. And they're like, arguing on every second post with oh, all these other yeah. people from the yeah. you know yeah. the other end of the spectrum, perennially arguing about issues, and you can tell they're a complete drama queen. Right. I know, I know you guys have never seen any anybody like that on social media, <laughs> but I see it on my social media. Right. All day, every day. The same drama, the same drama and trauma from the same people, drama queens. Yeah. Which really comes down to another point. Whatever you accept. Whatever you settle for, you enable. Whatever you settle for, that's your life. Whatever you settle for in your business, that's what you get. And if you settle for anyone with a pulse who can fog a mirror who calls himself a realtor and is willing to throw you a bone, well, guess what? That's precisely what you get. You see people come in and out of relationships, just perennial drama and trauma and chaos and dis disorder and dysfunction. This is what you see. You see someone who's settling for mediocre, settling for average. I may be speaking to someone right now, intimately, to your particular situation. And whatever you settle for, that's your life. You want to level up your life, you got to level up your standards, which is another reason for Realtor Recon. Raise your standards. Get clarity. What's a must for you? Imagine what would be possible in your life and your business. If you had the audacity to raise your standards to the point where you would only work with people who inspire you, who uplift you, who make you feel better about life, better about yourself, better about your business, because they're champions, they're eagles, they're winners. They're not wimps, they're warriors, they're winners, they're champions. Imagine if you built a dream team where you just decided... I will not accept anything less than a superstar on my team. Superstars only. I'm getting goosebumps right now just thinking about it. Think about how inspiring it would be to show up every day in your business when you set that standard for yourself. Think about how fun it would be to build a dream team like that and collaborate with that kind of quality individual. And here's the thing. Water seeks its own level. If you want to attract a 10, who do you need to be? You need to be a 10. Whether it be in dating in marriage, or in business partnerships. You want to attract the 10? Who do you need to be to be the 10 who attracts the 10? If you're settling, if you're a slack ass waiting for things to happen, being reactive instead of proactive, if you are making excuses, if you're living in a victim story, if you're 
continually procrastinating and making rationalizations and justifications why your life isn't the way you want it and you're complaining? Do you think you're going to attract a, stu- a superstar, a champion when you show up like that? I got news for you. It ain't going to happen. So the other really awesome thing about Realtor Recon is it challenges you. It creates an opening for you to set higher standards for who do you want to attract and thereby conversely at the same time simultaneously also setting a higher standard for yourself because you can't attract that which you are not. You attract who you are. You guys with me on that? Yep. Right? So what better reason to do real to recon than that? To get clear on who you are committed to attracting, the standards that you will absolutely have defiant resolve to uphold for yourself and your business in terms of the caliber and quality of the individuals you work with, what you will settle for and what you won't settle for. And then you rising to that standard yourself, you leading by example, you want to attract a 10, you show up as a 10, right? How's that for life changing? It's big, buddy. It's big. I mean, that's, I mean, you're looking at proof of it. I mean, I was working a hundred hours a week and I was in a position at a, at a, at a company where I couldn't choose my partner. I was told who my partner was. Right. And I had to answer the phone for every Tom, Dick and Harry, whether they were chumps or champs. And I had to do it all without any really assistance. How much did that suck? I mean, I'm here today because you helped me get out of it. You know, we quickly realized that I could do the same amount of business and here I am a year and a half doing it. I mean, 25 deals this month, 11 million, man. I mean, working with how, working with how many less realtors than you were before? I'm working with 14 realtors. How many did you have before? 30 plus? How about 272? Dude, that's called a lot of freaking diapers to wipe. 272 people that could call me at any point in time, ask me any question, zero, zero respect of my time. Um, you know, uh, zero respect to my schedule. Um, Mm -hmm. and if I didn't call them, they would run to the manager, call the manager, the manager would call, text me like, you know, someone just got hit by a car Mm -hmm. and it was all because of that. Now, did I answer the phone 99.9% of the time? Of course I did. Um, but you know, it's, it's the type of thing where you can only wear yourself so thin with partners that you don't want to work with. I mean, Mm -hmm. We talked about a couple of the partners that, you know, I broke up with this year because they didn't fit the mold. And mm-hmm. what I've what I've really worked to do, Doran, is create that mold. I set the standards up front. I lay out what it takes to be a partner with me, how we work, and I explain all of it. And that is the key is getting to that comfort level with that partner, showing that value. I want to give you business. I want to show you how to do business. Okay, mm-hmm. but you gotta let us do the mortgage side, right? Mm-hmm. You gotta let us execute on how we want you to refer, mm-hmm. how we want you to uh, send us, you know, certain things during the transaction in a timely manner. Mm-hmm. We need you to trust us that we're gonna communicate. And you know, I think one important thing that you and I have not covered before, even though we did do it for myself. Um, but as in a group setting, I think it's really good for you as a loan officer, maybe at your company or, you know, in a business networking group or with your partners to really establish kind of what your mission statement is and who, who you are. Solidify in a few words what, what you do, what, what your meaning is. And kind of like what we came up for me, Doran, you know, ask Pete, I'm a merchant of certainty. I am a merchant of certainty. I sell results. You ask me a question, I'm going to get you an answer. It's, and I'm going to give you a timeline in which I'm going to get you that answer. It's mm-hmm. important for a partnership. I don't want to hear, oh, I'll, get to, I'll, I'll let you know uh, later today. No, I want to know by a time. By 3 o'clock, I'm going to get you an answer. Or I'll call you back in 20 minutes. Let me call my underwriter and find out information. That is a partnership. That mm-hmm. is you know, setting expectations and then getting the result for whatever that person needs. And that's Mm -hmm. business. That expectation of me answering the phone at 11 o'clock on a Sunday night because you have a question on something, that's not 
those aren't good expectations because they're it's not going to happen. Well, if you don't want a life, by all means, you can settle for that. But again, like we talked about before, you get what you settle for. And if you're okay yeah. with that being your life, then by all means, settle for that. But if you, Dude, it's not a life, it's a wife. If you don't want a wife, right? Yeah, and it's a bitching, moaning, whining, sniveling wife that's all always got towing you around by the nose, no telling you no what, what to do, when to do it, barking at you, getting you to do stuff when you don't want to do it all day, every day. I mean, really, is that the kind of life you want to live? A life of obligation, a life of slavery, a life of you know settling for second best. Chances no. are you guys did not sign up for the mortgage business to settle for a second best life. You got in this business because you actually saw that there's unlimited upside potential and you can actually build a life that sets you free where you can have the freedom, the flexibility to do what you want when you set it up properly. But then we get so caught up in the minutia, we lose sight of the mission. We get so minutia minded, we lose sight of the mission. That's why clarity is power, friends. Because when you are crystal clear on what you are committed to and you do not settle and you own the victory in advance as if it's already yours and you are mission minded every day, focusing on making the mission real, turning the mission into reality, you don't settle for bullshit. You just don't because you're not willing to settle for anything less than the dream, period, end of story. And a lot of you guys, the reason why you're making chump change, busting your tail and staying stuck in the stagnation and muck and mire mediocrity is because you're settling and you got a story that it's hard to win. You get a story that you got to have to put in more hours to raise your volume. You got a story that the market is working against you. You got a story that you're not getting enough support from the you know, supervisor or the manager or the company or whatever. And all of this is a story that's keeping you stuck in stagnation. Just let go of the story. Get over it. Suck it up, buttercup. Yes, winning ain't easy. Get over it. It ain't supposed to be easy. But here's the ticket, my friends. Get clear on what you want. Get crystal clear on your want, what you want. Believe in your heart. You're capable and worthy of it. And then get to freaking work and make it real and don't settle. That's it. I know it's not easy, but it's simple. Know what you want, do not settle for anything less than what you want, and then get to freaking work and make it real, period. That's the ticket right there. And that's the story of Pete Fakaisen. He got to a point where he was sick and tired of being sick and tired of babysitting 200 drama queen realtors. And he says, I'm freaking done with this. I'm signing up for a different plan called the business serves me, not me serving the business. I own the business. The business does not own me. A hundred percent, man. And it's game changing. And, right. you know, while I still work for a company, I run my own branches. Um, you know, I manage people still, but having the, having the choice to be able to pick your own partner and pick your own realtors and who you want to do business with is key. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had a lot of tough conversations with a lot of people. And uh, especially when, you know, um, especially when you built a lot of relationships over the years, um, and you know, you had to move on. Yeah. Um, and those people were used to, you know, me doing everything, every time, any place. And by the way, I still do that for a lot of people, but it's 14 core partners. Reciprocal same partners. Belief as me, yes. That we, we meet, we meet every other week. We have good laughs. We do dinner with our spouses. Mm. I mean, these are friends. These right. are, you know, just they're, they're part of my core. They're part of my life. And yeah, they, they're the kind of people I mean, that you want to hang with on your time off. It's, it's more than business. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's important to get to a place like that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I it's it's not easy. And relationships do take time. And you know, there's people even in my own building where I work that are real estate agents that I'm just starting to get to know and do business with. And the guy, one of the realtors said to me, he's like, you know, I'm, I, you know, we haven't done any business yet together. I said, hey, when you're ready to make that leap and commit, I'm ready to go over my process with you. In the meantime, I might hook you up with a couple, you know, leads here and there. Is that okay? Um, you know, and 
it's just important to understand that it's not always a take, take, take. And I think with a lot of the things that, you know, we're doing today with Facebook, um, we're doing today with business to business opportunities. Um, you know, if you can bring more to them and kind of reverse that script, um, I feel like everyone's searching for that consummate professional in this business. Mm -hmm. um, it isn't always about rate. It is about service. And you have to sell more than just one deal. You have to sell being consistent for the future, right? Because you know the people, a lot of people at these larger banks um, that are in-house don't, you know, they just, they're not having that service level because their company won't let them, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, but I, I think, you know, driving, driving your agenda, um, communicating, um, all that recon lays the foundation for a great interview in first meet. And it's all undergirded by a premise. The premise is you can have it the way you want it. I'm getting some reverb, brother. If you could turn down the volume a bit on your speakers, just a little reverb on the on the microphone there. Okay. So the whole premise that undergirds the strategy around recon is that you can have it the way you want it. Some might say, Dorn, I would totally raise my standards, but these higher producers, they're married to the realtor. You know, I'm chasing unicorns here. You know, I can go after the top dogs, but they won't give me the time of day. They're already married to their lender. And so notice there's a belief that undergirds that objection. And it's the belief that you can't have it the way you want it. That it's too hard. It's too difficult. The odds are too insurmountable. And so they say, why bother going for the top dogs? That's a closed door. That's a locked door. I'm going to go with what I can get. Notice what that is. That's called settling. So then you waste all your time with these newbies who don't got jack for listings. They don't got jack for buyers. And you wonder why you're broke. You wonder why you're spinning your wheels. You wonder why your business isn't moving forward because you're settling and you're buying a bullshit belief that the top dogs are too hard to get. So when are you going to embrace the truth that you can have it the way you want it. How long are you willing to settle for second best in your life and your business? How much is it costing you to continue to hold on to a belief that you can't have it the way you want it? What's it costing you in income and freedom and fulfillment and victory for yourself and your family? Notice how much it costs to hold on to some bullshit lie that you can't have it the way you want it. Other people are doing it. Why not you? So here's the big distinction. Top producers, let me ask you this. What if top producers, if you have the right value proposition, if you show up like a 10 out of 10 player and you shine like no one else, you show up like no one else, you got a kick-ass value proposition like no one else. What if the top producers are the first and most to appreciate that and are the first and most to catch notice of that and are the first and most to reciprocate in kind and want to do business with you and send you all their business? What if top producers are the first and most to take that value proposition and to convert that into cash in your wallet? What if that was the truth? Am I, am I rattling some cages today? I hope so. I know you guys didn't you didn't want fluff, you didn't want BS, so you're welcome. You're getting the real deal here today. So notice all this is belief driven, guys. It's belief driven. What do you need to believe to have it the way you want it? It's all based on you showing up being a 10 out of 10. That's why Pete Fakaisen kicks ass, because he shows up being a 10 out of 10. He attracts eagles because he is eagle. He shows up in a way that attracts the best of the best. And the only thing that would stop him from not having the best of the best is his belief that he can't afford it or that he can't do it or he's not deserving of it or he's not capable of it. Ain't that true, Pete? That's right, man. Um, you know, and I'll give you a quick example. Um, two days ago, 
Well, as everyone knows, uh, on June 5th, Fannie Mae came out with a uh, bunch of information, game-changing information that has to do with condos, right? And um, th these are this is big news. So I'd uh, sent out to my Facebook groups that I have, my private groups, saying, hey, listen, big news coming. Um, I'll be bringing this to your office shortly. Uh, any questions, please call me. Here are the general items, right? Another loan officer walked into the office, dropped off sheets, had it, sheets put into every single little pamphlet and, and said, call me, call me, call me to, you know, to review this. No, no follow up action or anything like call me. Um, you know, uh, this should be coming soon. I'm waiting for underwriters to, to, to get back to us. Um, based off his visit and, you know, my Facebook piece, you know, I started making phone calls and uh, booking appointments at offices to actually do presentations, to go over all of the, the nooks and crannies. Meanwhile, there's all these other loan officers out there going out and telling people, oh, that they don't know what the deal is. And I mean, the worst thing you can ever say is, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know when it's coming out. Those are the excuses, Dorian. Merchants of uncertainty. Talk about being a merchant of uncertainty. Of uncertainty. They're right. merchants of uncertainty, right? <laughs> <laughs> as if we need more of that. Right. So it, it's so important that as, as a loan officer of, you know, you know, having that confidence, like you say, and having the results, giving the direction, um, giving answers promptly. Um, and if you don't know it, you set an expectation of when you're going to deliver the answer. And by the way, that should be pretty quick in this day and age. If you've got Google, you can get most answers to any mortgage question on Google, by the way. I don't even call underwriters half the time. You can look it all up right online. And if you need an underwriter, if you don't have a process where you can call an underwriter or call your scenario desk to get some sort of answer quickly, you need to make sure that change happens at your company right away. I mean, you have to be someone that's going to get answers. You know, I've got new business cards coming out and on the back, on the front, it says my contact information. On the back, it says Ask Pete in big, huge letters. Ask Pete. That's it. I had to fight my company to do it, but you know, I don't really. Bold, bold move. Two words. That must have taken about six months to pass through pass through compliance. Yeah, compliance. They didn't, they didn't <laughs> like the font. <laughs> no, my compliance is great. You know, if you put stuff through them, you know, they approve it. They appreciate it, and. The quicker you get your compliance items approved, the quicker you get reimbursed. So, um, for expenses. So, you know, it's being that merchant of certainty, having the confidence to be consistent. Consistency. That's what I preach. Consistent, consistent, consistent. Mm -hmm. I am consistent. I close your loan. I market them on their birthdays. I market them happy Fourth of July with you as the realtor. Um, you know, I'm doing all the things that no one else is doing. That they should be doing, that they won't do, so you do it for them. And now that just adds yet another stack, another item to your stack of awesomeness. Another yeah. reason why they'd be crazy to settle for second best going with the mortgage guy or mortgage gal who just focuses on mortgages, that just thinks yeah. they're in the mortgage business. Screw that, you wanna be a top dog, you wanna attract the top dogs, you got to move beyond just being a mortgage guy, a mortgage guy, a mortgage gal. You got to position yourself as irreplaceable and indispensable by becoming a mortgage marketing expert who can bring marketing tactics, strategies, campaigns, value adds that help your partners win. It's about yeah. being a marketer, not just being a mortgage guy or a mortgage gal. To be at the end of the day, who cares if you got great rates and great service? Doesn't everyone do that? Who cares if you show, show up and actually close up on time? Doesn't everyone promise that? Yeah, That's just the minimum expectation of doing business, friends. You want to show up and know without a shot of a doubt that if anyone says no to your proposition, it's because they're settling for second best. It's because they're willing to settle for second best. It's because they don't qualify for what you got. If you want to show up with overtures to realtors, with your shoulders back, your head held high and to be interviewing them instead of them interviewing you to know without a shot of a doubt that they need you more than you need them. You've got to have total certainty in your unique value proposition. 
you got to know that you know that you know that anything else aside from what you bring to the table, any other lender in your space is settling for second best when it comes to the realtor choosing them versus you. Does that mean you go after everybody? No. But does that mean that you are concerned about having a realtor go with your competitor? No. Because you know all you need is a handful of warriors, winners, champions to be making multiple six figures. One solid partner, one solid top producer can be worth six figures to you. Just one. One top producer that's doing 25, 50 plus transactions a year. Think about it. If they just send you a fraction of their business, let alone all of it, and when they're a true partner, they send all of it, that's worth six figures to you. I don't care if you're in Idaho or San Diego. That's, that's worth six figures to you when you're capturing that much business. How many of those real partners do you really need to live the life you want to have for yourself and your family? I'm telling you, it ain't that many. It ain't 20. It ain't 30. We're talking maybe 6 to 12. Maybe 6 to 12. I want you guys to step up your game in terms of what you believe you're capable and worthy of and raise your standards. Stop settling for second best. And then you'll be a stand for other people not settling for second best. So when they say, hey, you know, we haven't talked for a while. You know, I've been thinking about maybe, you know, doing business with you. Well, listen, I'm cool, man. Whenever you're ready to stop settling for second best and stop messing with the chumps and step up with the champ, I'm, I'm here for you to talk about whether or not you qualify. But at the end of the day, I'm good either way, brother. So you just let me know when you're ready to roll. Notice the posture there versus, yeah, I've been, I've been thinking about why you haven't been calling and, you know, it'd be great to get together and, you know, maybe I could take you out for lunch. Notice there's zero neediness, zero neediness. When you know that you know that you know that you've got the cookie. They need you more than you need them. So that's the rant for the day. You're welcome. And uh, why don't we talk about what's next because we're running out of time. So at this point, some of you might be thinking, okay, Doran, I get this recon thing. I get raising my standards. I get I need to believe it. I get I, I can't st I can't continue to settle. I need to raise my standards. I got to believe I'm capable and worthy of this. I got to believe that I can have it the way I want it. And I got to make a defiant resolve within myself. I'm not willing to settle. But Doran, there's one piece of this thing. The whole driver behind this thing is I need to have a kick ass value proposition and I don't. And that's where I'm stuck. And if that's you today, you need to get on the phone with us and we need to put that problem to rest because that is our area of expertise. Just like Pete, he was struggling, changing 200 diapers. He wasn't <laughs> running the business. The business was running him. He was getting towed around by the nose, having his business run him instead of him running the business. Then he stepped up, he got with us and his life is forever changed. That was a defining moment in his life. And I want to give you guys a similar opportunity. So if you want to get clarity on what it's going to take to get that unique value proposition, so you can have your shoulders back, your held, head held up high, and be able to build your business with dignity and power and attract the right partners at will on your terms, not theirs, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough coaching session with myself or one of my consultants where we will lift up the hood on your business. We'll look at what's working right now in your business, what's not working in your business, where are you now, where do you wanna be, Where? what's the gap, and then if we can help you, we'll show you how to bridge that gap. If we can't, we'll direct you wherever we deem suitable. But either way, you're gonna get massive value, massive clarity, and it's gonna be a powerful call that has the possibility and potential to change your life forever. So if you're down with that, if you dig that idea, I invite you to go to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. That's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply, just like you see on your screen there. And uh, book a call into our calendar. We'll get together. And uh, I'll tell you what, you'll have more clarity out of that one hour call than perhaps you've had in your entire career in terms of what it is you're committed to and how to make it real, how to make it happen working smarter, 
not just working harder. So with that being said, Pete, anything else you'd like to share before we wrap up today? Um, no, I think, I think we covered a lot. I think, you know, we can only cover so much on these, um, you know, on these lives. Um, so I implore you to reach out and, you know, definitely talk with Doran and, and or one of his staff members like myself and let's get you, let's get you dialed in. I mean, you can learn a lot just from an intro call and the kind of what, how we work to do your breakthrough. Um, but um, it could be a simple fix, it could be a big fix. Um, but I think it's uh, it's definitely worth your time to, you know, check it out and, and try something new because again, you're going into Q3 and Q4 and you got to be prepared. And we have a ton of marketing strategies um, to bring in bring in the dollars and to bring in those right partners. So, um, you know, definitely, you know, get on that link and uh, reach out. Sweet beans, brother. Thanks for All hanging right, with me. Um, thank you for watching, guys. Thanks for listening. So just own your power, guys. Own your victory. You got this. You were made to win. You were made for victory. Let that soak into your core. You were made for victory. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it all day long, friends. You were made <laughs> for victory. Own it, live it, claim it. Let's make it real. All right, guys, making a fantastic day. Thanks for being awesome. Love you guys. Go forth, take massive action. You'll get massive results, baby. Let's rock this. Make it a great one, everybody. Peace.